This is a revision video for AQA GCSE Chemistry or Combined Science Unit 3, Quantitative Chemistry. Like the other videos in this series, this is a list of pure factual recall questions from the specification. There aren't a huge number of these for Unit 3, because Quantitative Chemistry is very much about being able to do calculations and processes, so this is going to be quite a short video, but there are still a few facts that you need to know from the specification. The law of conservation of mass tells us that no atoms can be created or destroyed during a chemical reaction. And this means that the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products must be exactly the same as each other. And this is what allows us to balance symbol equations. When we're balancing those symbol equations, we need to use chemical symbol formulae. And the small subscript numbers in these formulae tell us about the number of atoms that are in a particular molecule or substance. So here in this methane molecule, the small four tells us that each molecule contains four atoms of hydrogen. The large number in front of a molecular formula like this one tells us about the number of molecules. So this formula here tells us that the reaction contains three water molecules. MR is relative formula mass, which is the mass of one mole of a substance. To calculate relative formula mass, you need to add up the individual atomic masses of all of the atoms that are in a symbol formula. To work out the percentage by mass of an element in a compound, you need to work out what the mass of the element is and divide that by the mass of the entire compound, and then multiply this by 100% to give you a percentage. When you have a reaction that has a gas as a reactant or a product, the reaction may appear to change mass, even though we know it really doesn't. So for instance, when a metal burns in oxygen, the reading on the balance will increase. And the reason for this is that the mass of the oxygen atoms, which already had a mass, but they were floating around in the atmosphere before, is now contributing to the reading on the balance. In the opposite situation, where we thermally decompose a metal carbonate, it breaks apart to make a metal oxide and some carbon dioxide. And those carbon dioxide molecules are able to escape. They still have a mass, but whereas before the carbon and oxygen atoms were pushing down on the balance and contributing to the reading, now they no longer are. And so the reading on the balance is going to decrease. In science, uncertainty is the range of possible values around a reading that we make using a piece of equipment. And to calculate percentage uncertainty, you need to look at the range of those values and divide by the mean value, and then multiply this by 100% to give a percentage. The next few questions about moles are only for those sitting the higher tier exams. So if you're sitting foundation, you can skip ahead slightly. The chemical symbol for moles, very creatively, is just mole. The name given to the number of particles, atoms, and so on of a mole of a given substance is Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. And this number has a value of 6.02 times 10 to the 23. If we think about the number of molecules in one mole of carbon dioxide and one mole of glucose, it's going to be exactly the same because there's one mole of each substance. In any chemical reaction containing more than one reactant, you're going to struggle to have exactly the right amount of each reactant to make sure the reaction works out perfectly. So the limiting reactant is the one that's going to control the amount of product that you can make because there isn't enough of it and all of it is going to be used up. The other reactant is referred to as the excess reactant. A solution is a mixture containing a soluble solid called a solute in a solvent, which is the liquid that can dissolve it. To calculate the concentration of that solution, we divide the amount of the solute, which can either be a mass in grams or an amount in moles if you're sitting higher tier, by the volume of the solvent. The standard unit for measuring concentration is grams per decimeter cubed, although if you're sitting higher tier we can also give concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. There are 1000 centimeters cubed in a decimeter cubed. As the mass of a solute increases, or as the volume of the solvent decreases, the concentration will get higher. The rest of the questions in this video are for people taking the GCSE chemistry exams, otherwise known as the triple science exams. So if you're taking GCSE combined science, you can turn off now. When you carry out a titration and you start out by measuring a known volume of the substance that you don't know the concentration of, you should do this using a volumetric pipette and a pipette filler. The other reactant, which you do know the concentration of, but not exactly how much you're going to add, goes into the burette. 
The volumes on both of these pieces of equipment should be measured at eye level from the meniscus. An indicator is a chemical that will change colour in response to changes in pH. The end point of the titration is the very first time that that indicator permanently changes colour. When doing titration, we use a white tile to allow you to see the indicator changing colour more clearly. The conical flask is used so that you can swirl your solution without risking any of it splashing out. And it's important to swirl because if you don't, then you might have different areas of that solution that have different concentrations. We're trying to homogenise the solution. We use a wash bottle to rinse down the sides of the conical flask and also the burette. And this is because it's really important that any drops of solution that have come out of the burette actually get into the conical flask and take part in the chemical reaction. Otherwise, their volume is going to be recorded, but they're not actually going to contribute to the chemistry. Concordant data is where we have titers that are within 0.10 centimetres cubed of each other. And that gives you a little bit of a clue that a titer should always be reported to two decimal places, although the second of those decimal places will always be a zero or a five. The yield of a reaction is the amount of the product that is being made. And there are three reasons that a chemical reaction may not achieve its expected or maximum theoretical yield. It may be an incomplete reaction, particularly if it's a reversible reaction and the equilibrium is not all the way over to the right hand side. It's possible that the correct amount of yield was produced, but some is lost during extraction because it's been left on the walls of the container. And finally, some of the reactants may have taken part in what we call side reactions. So for instance, they may have reacted with oxygen in the atmosphere. To calculate percentage yield, we take the total amount of product that you actually made and divide it by the maximum theoretical yield, in other words, the amount you expected to make. And then we turn that into a percentage by multiplying by 100%. Atom economy is a measure of how much of the reactants that you had actually ended up in the useful products. Atom economy is important both for sustainable development and for economic reasons. To calculate atom economy, we look at the mass of the useful products and divide that by the total mass of the reactants and multiply that by 100%. You may also see this written as mass of useful products divided by the mass of all products. And that's what I tend to do because it's an easier calculation. But as we know, the law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products will be exactly the same, so we can just substitute them in. Room temperature and pressure for AQA GCSE chemistry are taken as being 20 degrees C and one atmospheric pressure. And at that temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas takes up 24 decimeters cubed. That's it for Unit 3. I did warn you it was a short video. Make sure that you're doing plenty of practice of all of the calculations because they really make up the meat of Unit 3 and that's where you're going to find most of the hardest questions. I hope you found this useful and if you did then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.